everyone goes through internal struggles that may be overwhelming even for the best of us. Today's story is about Gene Seberg, one of America's finest, whose life ended abruptly after a short, brilliant career. In this video, we will be looking at her life, career, and circumstances surrounding her tragic death. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, do so now so we can continue. Without wasting much time, let's dive in. Early Life on November 13, 1938, little Jean Dorothy Seberg was born in Marshalltown, Iowa, to Edward Waldemar Seberg, a pharmacist of Swedish, English, and German descent, and Dorothy Airline, a teacher. Their last name was originally Carlson, but her grandfather decided there were too many Carlsons in the world and changed the family name to Seberg after the Swedish mountains and waters. Jean was the second of four children, with one elder sister, Marianne, and two brothers, Kurt and David. David was killed in a car accident when he was 18. After high school, Seberg attended the University of Iowa, where she studied dramatic arts but ended up ditching stage acting for the silver screens instead. Career Seberg enjoyed a successful movie career, which started with a role in a George Bernard Shaw's play titled St. Joan in 1957, where she beat 18,000 actresses to get the role. The amazing part of all of this was that she didn't even apply for the role. A neighbor had seen the advertisement for the talent show and entered her name. She ended up with not only the role, but a $150,000 prize for winning the talent show. For an amateur actress who had very little experience, a lead role in a popular play was a bit too much for her to handle. Her performance wasn't exactly the best, and critics had a field day tearing her apart. She later told the press, I have two memories of St. Joan. The first was being burned at the stake in the picture. The second was being burned at the stake by the critics. The latter hurt more. I was scared like a rabbit and it showed on the screen. It was not a good experience at all. Seberg later admitted that she was embarrassed by all the attention that the making of the movie put on her. Despite her failure in the first movie, director Otto Preminger, who is also the director of her first movie, gave her another chance to prove herself in his next film, Hello Sadness in 1958. Speaking about his decision to the press, he said, It's quite true that if I had chosen Audrey Hepburn instead of Gene Seberg, it would have been less of a risk, but I prefer to take the risk. I have faith in her. Well, too bad faith doesn't make up for bad performances, as her performance in this movie was far from good. Critics once again came after poor Jean and almost wrecked her career. She canceled her contract with Preminger on mutual terms and signed for Columbia Pictures. Things got a little better as her first film with Columbia Pictures, The Mouse That Roared, released in 1959, was hugely successful. She later moved to France and soon became the heroine of French New Wave films, achieving her long-sought cinema success. She hit international stardom when she appeared as the lead actress in a French movie titled Breathless, which was directed by Jean-Luc Godard in 1960. The film itself was a huge success, and critics praised her excellent performance as Patricia Fricini, the girlfriend of the lead character. A film critic and director, Francois Truffitt, described Seberg as the best actress in Europe. She, however, didn't enjoy making films in France, and even described one of the productions as pure hell, saying the producers would sometimes scream at her. Well, nobody likes terrible working conditions, so in the late 1960s, she returned to Hollywood fully, although she still accepted a few offers to appear in French films. Upon her return to Hollywood, the critics, who had almost ended her career, had to take back their words and acknowledge her as one of the finest in the world. Her first film upon her return was Lilith in 1964, which she starred alongside Warren Beatty. The film was hugely successful, which led to several more roles in American and French movies. Personal Life at the age of 19, she got married to a French lawyer named Francois Mouriot. They had met 15 months earlier, during one of her trips to France, and they got married in September 1958 in Marshalltown. They got divorced two years later, and Mouriot, his reason for the divorce, saying she got married for all the wrong reasons. Despite the divorce and her work in America, she loved the French life and lived there for the rest of her life. In 1962, she met Romain Gary, who was a French aviator, novelist, and diplomat. He was also married at the time to Leslie Blanche and was 24 years older than Seberg. He divorced Blanche in September 1962 and married Seberg in October 1962 in a secret wedding at Corsica. Together they had a child, Alexander Diego Gary, whose birth was kept a secret, even from close relatives. During her marriage, she and her family moved around a lot, living in Greece, Spain, and France. While on the set of the film, Paint Your Wagon, she had an affair with Clint Eastwood, who was also married at the time. 
She also started an affair with Carlos Navarra, who was a student at the time. She fell pregnant and had a daughter for Navarra, but the baby died two days later. It was a huge scandal, and to save face, her husband came out to publicly declare the child was his, but she later acknowledged that Navarra was the real father. Her marriage with Gary ended, and in 1972, she married Dennis Barry. In 1979, while she was separated from Barry, she entered a Muslim marriage contract with Ahmed Massini, whom she stayed with for the rest of her life, despite coming out to say that he abused her. During the 1960s, Seberg encouraged civil rights group by providing financial support for them. These groups fought mainly for the rights of colored people, which wasn't exactly welcomed at the time. So, when the FBI caught wind of this, they began to harass, defame, and intimidate her. The main goal was to cause her embarrassment, and one of the numerous stories they cooked up was that her pregnancy was for Raymond Hewitt, a member of the Black Panther Party. Several news agencies carried these stories, spicing them up to sound even more atrocious, which affected Seberg's mental health greatly. She went into premature labor after reading one such story, and the child died two days later. Aside from the defamation, there was constant surveillance of her every move, which was very disturbing. Her mental health deteriorated, and she started drinking heavily, and even attempted to take her own life a few times, especially on the anniversary of the death of her daughter. On August 30, 1979, she went missing, and nine days later, her corpse was found wrapped in a blanket on the back seat of her car, parked close to her Paris apartment, with a bottle of barbiturates and a water bottle. There was also a note to her son, asking him to forgive her. The police ruled her death as probable suicide. I guess we will never know what really happened. For more interesting stories like these, check out our previous videos and put on post notifications so you would be the first to know when we release new content. Remember to like this video and stick around for more. See you in the next video. Ciao!